Oki Itameksistiko. Good day. It is Wednesday morning, April 13, 2022, in the lunar cycle Saaki Sum. And believe it or not, there were rattlesnakes out <laughs> basking in the sun just a few days ago. And now we are proving that we are still yet in the last winter moon. As you can see, it's a little bit snowy, a little bit chilly today. Um, I'm here at Spopikimi this morning to take just a real quick walk around. I particularly want to go into the forest main and look around for some goldenrod galls I have in mind today to put together a necklace with some existing beads that I have and goldenrod galls to kind of start bringing that back as one of my things that I'll sell in the uh, art studio I saw some years ago um, in a collection from the from the blood reserve that was being held in the British Museum in London I saw a necklace of those goldenrod galls painted with ochre which means it was it was special that goose is very heavy she's got eggs <laughs> yeah it is still nesting time Look at the water slushy. The ducks just make pads in there. I don't know if you can see that through this camera lens, but I'm going to shift over here real quick anyway to show you the the goose that's still sitting her nest on the um, on the beaver lodge. But yeah, anyway, goldenrod gall necklace. I had seen one, and I've never seen anybody use them uh, ever around here otherwise. Um, so it's an old thing. They probably went away when glass beads came in, and I want to kind of bring that, bring some of that old stuff, uh, that old art back. Anyway, I'm going to switch cameras here real quick, show you the nesting goose, and we'll head over to the forest main, see if we can't find any of those galls. Every year during this lunar cycle when the birds are sitting their nests there is a snowstorm and this might not even be the last one it doesn't seem to be because usually our last snowstorm is a what we call a, a, a wolf cap Makoyistzomok and it's a, it's a wet, sticky snow that kind of cakes everything and it'll stick to the sides of the trees so the trees will look white, you know, on one side. Um, and this ain't it. This is not our wet, sticky wolf cap snow. So it may not be the last of the seasons, uh, little blizzards, but it's what we got going on for this morning. see a couple of different nesters out here on the wide south pool. This girl here has been sitting hers for over two weeks now. Two weeks and a couple of days. Her gander. And then up this way we have kind of a new nester here. And her gander off to the side. So a couple of nests go in here, but we should have goslings within the next two weeks. Gonna follow this deer trail through the forest today, rather than the regular main trail. Looking again at the goldenrods. Here's the uh, tall goldenrod flower head. And a lot of them I've noticed, like look at this, for instance, <clears throat> has the flower head, but the stalk has been denuded of leaves. And this is the case with most of the goldenrods in the forest at this point. They have no leaves. Um, 
I attribute that to the deer, hey, enjoying the leaves. On the other hand, rather than the, they leave the flowers, eat the leaves with the golden rods. Now, if you look at um, sweet clover, on the other hand, like this, you have the, uh, the flowered ends that are eaten off, the tips that are eaten off so that the, the deer are getting like uh, the seeds, eh? It's just a little bit of seeds left here and there, but most of the, of the uh, sweet clover has been deer clipped. In any case, I'm looking for goldenrod galls. And I know there's not a ton of them in the forest main because I think due to the fire, it killed a lot of the insect life. We didn't have a lot of the gnats laying their eggs on the golden rods last summer um, that would produce these galls. But there's some and I just need enough for a necklace, so I'm gonna keep looking. This pretty girl. <laughs> I saw a white tailed deer at Pavan Park the other night that has a serious issue um, some kind of deformation on its face maybe a result of an injury I don't know here I'll show you what that one looks like it's really kind of messed up we've been going past uh, Britt and I have been driving past this area where somebody's been leaving sunflower heads and uh, we go past there like maybe once an evening and there it was um, somebody on my Facebook said she had noticed that deer earlier in the season and it wasn't that bad so it's getting worse I don't know surprisingly here I still have not found a goldenrod gall and I'm almost to the other end of the forest so this may be a failed mission today, I don't know. Well, there we are. The end of the trail leading up to the levee and finally I found a couple of goldenrod galls. This one's got a woodpecker hole in it so I probably won't even use it. There might be a couple more around here, I'm gonna check real quick, but I don't have much time. I gotta get myself off to work. I thought there would be more through the forest than there was. Should have probably went to the owl wood where there was no fire. Uh, well, next time. But I'll collect what's here real quick and head her out. Actually, I've kind of backed up off of that trail end just a little ways here and I am uh, from a different direction finding a lot more gulls. I don't know if you see them in there, but there's... I'm getting a good pocket full. I should get enough for the necklace. Alright, so here is my haul from this morning. You can see I got a good little number of galls for a short stint out there. Could have got more if it wasn't for the fire and stuff, but we'll check some other forests later. In any case, I got some big ones, some small ones, some red ones, some pale ones. And today I'll take some of the you know, bigger, redder ones and incorporate them into this necklace that I have started yesterday. Um, I just took some galls that I had laying around the office that I had collected now and then and um, drilled holes through the ends. Basically cut off the, the sharp end of it, the stem end, so that it's flat and it exposes the pithy stuff and then um, I just do that with a razor knife and then I got a little drill hand drill you can poke a hole in there you can probably just poke a hole through with your needle but uh, I use a little hand drill and some of my existing beads I chose turquoise as the main and then I would like to do like 
glass and turquoise all the way up but I didn't have enough of these glass beads so I had to intersperse with these stone beads so I do glass stone stone glass stone stone you know I'll keep going finish this necklace today but that will be my reward to work on that after I get some other work done because um, I need to really get my workshops planned out. I'm supposed to be doing every week on Tuesday and Thursday afternoons from 1 to 3 uh, these kind of culturally anchored pre-employment workshops. So I've, I've got a series of seven that I'm developing that I'll be delivering. Uh, they were supposed to actually start two weeks ago, but I don't know. I don't have any clients signed up, and I really need to get them better organized anyway. So there's seven of them. Most of them are kind of like how to use Blackfoot concepts, approaches, philosophies, histories, knowledge, and this kind of thing um, to benefit oneself in the workplace, in employment, in career building, in entrepreneurship, in small business, whatever, right? So... Um, there's just a couple of them that are really kind of normal pre-employment stuff. Like I have this Aksok Sitsip Satop interview skills, you know, let's speak well. Um, so that's that's one of the workshops, the interview skills. Uh, there's also like um, uh, like like driver's learning training, hey, the, the way we're going to drive. Uh, so, got some drivers, you know, preparation for, for learning tests and such, but, but those are two out of seven workshops, and the other five are really culturally based, like the first one to, to open up the whole thing, and what I'm probably going to work on today is the everyday applications of Blackfoot culture in the workplace, and then the second one in the series, which I should probably work on today as well, um... Planning for the future. Uh, this kind of like just uh, career career planning and this kind of thing. And then, you know, that'll be week one of them. I'll do it one on Tuesday, one on Thursday. And then the next week, um, we'll go into the third workshop. Goal achievement and career building. And then we do the interview skills that Thursday. And then go into a third week. And uh, go into Apple. Apple. <laughs> Apple. I gotta learn some of these words. They're kind of new to me. Apple. Uh, ambassadorship. Structural racism communication barriers that kind of thing ambassadorship is the is the word that I'm going here for here with this apple at the moki um, communication culture and workplace relationships as means like we rely on one another we depend on one another you know so these are the these are the workshops I'm gonna be playing with and delivering I think they'd be good you know, a lot of them for pre-employment workshops, but I think they'd also be good for employers, like Lethbridge employers, to take some of these. Anyway, that's the real work I got to do in the office this morning, and then my my reward will be tinking around and and working on that necklace. And at some point, here we'll probably swing over, uh, maybe right before lunch, to the studio. I'll show you what's cooking over there. Hey, what do you think of the finished product? There we go. Well, I'm going to snip these ends off. They're just, I'm waiting for the glue to dry. I pulled both ends back through one of the golden rods and put some glue in there so it'll stay nice and tight. But yeah, that's my first golden rod gall necklace, and I think it looks pretty good. Pretty good. All right, let's go in the studio, see what's up. See what's up? I think where's Anne's in here. Hey. 
Hello. No Yolanda yet, eh? Check it out. Oh, wow. That's made with goldenrod galls from the coulee. Oh, my gosh. Hey? Yeah, that's wicked awesome, man. Yeah, I'll cut off those those loose ends of the string when the glue dries in there, but yeah. Are these those, um, are these you boil these? No, I didn't even have to boil them. The woodpecker did that little hole. I, I used only put one in there that still had a woodpecker hole, just for good luck. But oh wow! Rest. Hey, that's awesome. Hey, jeez, that's really good. Bit of an epilogue. It's Sunday evening, Easter, and I stopped videotaping after visiting the studio that day. Didn't catch any more really for the next couple of days except I guess a little glimpse at some of my visits to the pond. Things have changed. We had cold spell. The pond froze over. It looks like predators got to the goose nests, the two goose nests on the wide south pool, and destroyed them. The one on the beaver lodge still remains. As well as others that I probably just don't see hidden in the reeds on the wet meadows. I'm at the wilderness park this evening, chilling out, enjoying the view with this goose. <laughs> no, I came up here kind of poking around for fossils and such, but I think I'm gonna go up the coulee and down another slope looking for Mucinian. Should be out some roots. Yeah. Not a lot else has happened, but I thought I'd tack on a little a little end piece to the video here while it's still in play and uh, let you know the updates on those nests. The red-winged blackbirds are back. It looks like we're headed into a warm week now, so things are going to be shifting up and changing. What's up, buddy? Yeah, looking in the most likely areas for Mucinian, which are usually around deer trails that follow the coulee ridges. Um, this trail's a little bit too new, I think. Not quite worn enough, but I think maybe up this way I'll connect with something that's been around a while, and that hard packed trail ground is where. There's really three different types of wild parsley growing right in Lethbridge area. A couple others on the reserve as well. Look at this, what a sight, eh? Hey? Just noticed something here. Let me go check it out, see what that is. Um, yeah, I was just filming for you, and something caught my eye. What is that? Looks very carcassish. Oh yes, unlucky Reese Easter Rabbit. Ouchie Wawa, buddy. Yikes. White-tailed jackrabbit. And, uh, have seen better days. <laughs> it's a much better, more worn-out trail here. Definitely more likely to see some Mucinian species, but some parsley, but haven't run into any yet.
<laughs> I'll have to remember where that big rabbit is. Come back and look at it after it's uh, decayed a bit more. Probably an eagle nabbed that rabbit. Now it's too funky, nobody wants it. Yeah, I've never really checked up here. This particular coolie is for Mucinian, so that hunt might end up being a dud. This is a bit, in fact, almost too worn. This kind of environment here, where it's kind of overgrown, with some short grass and such. I gotta make my way that way anyway though. But, come out to this point. If nothing else, we'll have a nice view. <laughs> I'm going slow because I'm looking at the ground. There are some different uh, different things coming out. They're not what I'm looking for though. I think. Well, I'm not sure what these guys are. I'm not sure. Definitely beautiful up here. Look at that deer way over that way. I haven't run into any shed antlers this year. Haven't spent too much time off trail though, so that can account for some of that. Definitely a few goose nests around, maybe along some of those cattle ponds over there. Yeah, no Mucinian. What went on here? Looks like another kill site, maybe. Something went down. Somebody lost some plumes. Again, more than likely eagle feeding spot right there, given the environment here. And the view. This is the upstream end of the wilderness park that we're looking at here. And down around the bend there would be Pavan. Just can't see it from this angle. Yeah, the wilderness park's basically just a big bend peninsula in the river. Very nice, very nice. Can't wait to watch all the plants and animals doing their thing here this summer. Yeah, definitely not finding the plant I was after. Now I'm headed down this draw. It's gonna lead me eventually toward the uh, main trail coming down off the parking lot. I think it's going to take me through 
a little bit of old mining territory here. Looks like uh, that whole cliff there was excavated at some point. Maybe even up to here, hey? Well, this could still be part of the natural coolie draw, but that's quite a big trench right there. Yeah, that's uh, got to be all excavated, because where did it all go? Where's the ground that uh, fell off? <laughs> I love these little, uh, sometimes you find these little patches of trees in the shady draws. In any case, this will probably be the end of this video. Um, what's new in the environment here primarily as we round the full moon the easter moon duck moon somebody's got a little sheltery thing started here lots of these kind of little makeshift shelters i don't know if it's the the kids clubs you know the militaristic kids clubs like uh Boy Scouty type things. <laughs> I don't even know if they got Boy Scouts. Yeah, they do have Boy Scouts here, I'm pretty sure. My friend Tim, who's Canadian as everything, was an Eagle Scout. That's a nice magpie nest. But in any case, I guess I'm done. I'm just rambling now. No need to extend this video further. Unless I come across something really cool. This is the end.